Yo. So I was sitting here looking at something on my laptop, and I noticed on the screen, you know, on my desktop screen that had the Houston webcam that looks at the downtown skyline open, that you could see this happen. So I'm going to switch to this view and then go. This happened literally like, you know, a minute ago. And look over here. And uh, let's watch that again. And we'll full screen this. My guess is uh, you might not be able to see it here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take myself off and just have this on the uh, just just what my desktop looks like. All right, so that was pretty spectacular, right? And you can see that the power went out everywhere around. That's actually, um, so just to point out, this building here is like the Federal Reserve Branch of Houston. Um, and then this is, you know, an office building. And I believe there's some apartments around here. And this is a new condominium building it's being built but it doesn't look as though they lost power so maybe they're on a different portion but uh it i mean that's pretty incredible to me as you can see down here it's uh 23 degrees here in houston texas it's a hard freeze uh you can even see the hard freeze alert up here um and it's hazy uh but I mean, this is pretty, uh, pretty incredible. Let's go live. It looks as though the power came back on. Um, I'm sure there's a somewhat capable, um, like a redundancy system where, you know, there's backups or something. But um, this is like the first instance of something going on that I've seen thus far of you know, some kind of problem here in Houston from the uh, weather that currently occurring. And uh, it is cold here. Look at this one more time. I mean, that's, it's very bright. Again, I have my laptop on, like, right... Uh, let's see. I have my laptop open, so if I, I do this so you can see, my laptop sits like here in front of me, and then the desktop monitor sits behind it, and um, so I have two screens basically lined up, right? And it was just like, I was looking at this screen, and but the whole, you know, the screen clearly uh, flashed pretty brightly, and so... Um, you know, as as a sign of things to come, that's a little worrying. I I hope um, I hope the infrastructure here in the energy capital of the world is able to withstand um, you know a couple of nights of extremely cold weather. I mean, it is an extreme. The thing is, we've had two years about two years since a previous extremely hard freeze that lasted for about a week um, that, you know, was like a probably the first time ever it got that cold here, um, at least for that sustained period of time. And in fact, let's pull this up really quickly. So if we go back, you'll be able to see... Um, this is uh this is like the cold basically like working its way down you can literally see it um and this is like temperature right and so i mean it is it is cold okay this is celsius too and uh this is i think the upper level air though but it's still obviously uh pretty cold right based on this um 
this is like I was saying when this happened um, or when the hard freeze or whatever you want to say when it happened in 2020 2020 2020 yeah 2020 um, you know it was one of those things that Everybody was pretty annoyed with the politicians because uh, we do live in the energy capital of the United States, right? It's it like I'll put it like this: it should be fixed by now. So if we have problems here in Houston, this absolutely represents a problem with the political leadership that is in control that they didn't focus on this issue, they focused on other issues. Um, specifically, I think gun ownership without a license, like with, without having to get training, you could get a handgun. That was pushed through before, like when this was still a major issue that had just happened, that was the focus of the, um, of the political leadership and our, our, our heads of government here in the state of Texas. I don't want to get too political. Um, generally, I lie in the middle of things, but this is one of those things where I can't imagine, other than how partisan things already are and that people just fall in line with whatever their party says, I can't imagine that it would be good for uh, the red team if if the entire state or even the major cities, even just Houston, has major issues again. But... You know, it was problematic the last time, and in all honesty, minor changes, I believe, have occurred since then, but it does not appear as if a major overhaul of the infrastru infrastructure relating to energy or, you know, anything, but specifically energy infrastructure and its capability to deal with um, swings into low temperatures, and I would even say, like, we had some issues with with this over the summer with high temperatures which absolutely here in houston in houston and in texas you get high temperatures and and houston's pretty uh resilient when it comes to high temperature like extremes <laughs> not low temperature extremes so when it was happening with the high temperature extremes it was one of those things where it's like hey this is problematic because if this is happening with high temperatures, when it swings back and we get the extremes on the other side, it's very likely to happen again. People died last time. And like, you know, economically, it was a major shot uh, for the for the state. And I, I think optically, it did not look good. Again, for the energy capital of the world to have energy uh, infrastructure problems. And... Um, you know, again, I would say that probably it should be uh, put on the top of the list of things to do to make sure that, you know, again, optically, it's not good to see that the energy capital of the world has this problem. Uh, and it's not for lack of enthusiasm on the part of the people in the city. It, again, it comes down to political things and... Um, Anyway, so we'll see what happens. I, again, this is not the best sign. Uh, this does not foreshadow. Because this is the first night of this, there's like several more nights and it might even get colder. I don't, you know, I guess we'll see. We'll see what happens. Who knows? But, uh, oh, man. I mean, you know, I also thought it was funny. It was like right either right before or right after Elon Musk moved to the state, he moved to Austin. And I believe he offered uh, like certain battery, like backups for, um, you know, to like work out some kind of system of battery backups or something. And I just think he was completely ignored about it. Um, which it's like, at least he's offering some kind of solution. Like, again, the energy infrastructure in this state, which is heavily known, it's known for energy. Like Texas, specifically Houston, Houston being the energy capital and space city, but the energy capital of uh, the world, literally the world. 
should not have uh, this kind of energy infrastructure problem, right? So again, I want to stress that if this problem, you know, if it does get worse, it is the weight is on the leadership politically. Team Red, you got to do something about this. I don't care what the leadership says. They haven't handled it if we see some kind of problem here. It's obvious if we have we see some kind of problem here uh, because, again, the swing upwards into the high temperatures also caused some problems earlier this year. And so, um, you know, this is more important than getting a gun without a permit. Like, I'm not anti-Second Amendment, but... <laughs> Like, this should jump to the front of the line, right? Um, economically, it's a big thing, too. Again, optically, this does not look good for the energy capital of the world, right? And so um, maybe you need some kind of uh, opinion from someone here in the energy capital of the world who's from the energy capital of the world uh, to speak out about, you know, what might be expected of the energy capital of the world and someone who also lived in Dallas. So I could look, you know, down towards Houston, see kind of, you know, a third person perspective. And yeah, this shouldn't happen in Houston or Dallas or Austin or San Antonio or El Paso or anywhere in Texas. This should not be happening. Uh, but specifically in the major cities where there should be enough, uh, you know, monies to like deal with temperature swings. You know, I mean, really, that's the thing is that it's very cold now. And again, when it got very hot, there was also this issue. So um, I'm sure some kind of solution can be worked out. This probably does not, other than the obvious partisan nature of, well, one party's been in charge and probably should have uh, put more effort into fixing this. I mean, I guess if nothing happens, nothing happens. But if something does happen, I think the blame squarely lies on the obvious uh, color out of red and blue. That would be the red one. Uh, you know, and again, I'm pretty purple when it comes to everything. I think both sides, uh, there's truths to both sides. Um, and like, you know, I just want a better world. And like, when you can't engage the reality of the situation because of how partisan things are, and, you know, the leadership in certain groups just might not want to engage the reality of situations in certain ways you tend to have problems so let me be the first to like point out these uh things and you know hopefully we drive towards realistic solutions but that was just absurd what what you could witness like literally what the world could witness on like a live webcam stream right of houston i mean optically again the optics of this situation are not great and um we're only, I suppose, a couple hours into it. So, uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else to add. Um, I guess I could, we could look at one more thing because I, I saw this. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'll pull this up now. Uh, sure. Oh, I don't know if this is going to work like it does on the website. Hold on. So um, I saw this thing on a... Apparently... All right. This will work, though. So I already, already tried it. So here. Now I know you can see this. This is Google Earth, like the web version. I tried to pull it up as a program on my computer, but... Um, you know, I, I assume that the program would work better than the browser, but... One thing apparently that has changed is this new is I think this is new is that you can live like this cloud coverage is is live or it's like accurate at least it's recent like if we go to COD you can see that this structure on this cloud on the clouds right here how it's moving I mean it's moving but if we just pause it right here and look at how that's structured you can see that that's this little thing here and that this would be the really wide open purple area in the middle, right? Purple area in the middle. This is the cloud structure that you can see on Google Earth. And then if you zoom in too much, you can't actually see anything anymore. But uh, I just wanted to pull it up. Like you can literally see it looks cold uh, from space. 
So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, we'll look at maybe one more thing. This is veggie. I think this is visible blue, visible red, visible, yeah, green, veggie. But if we do this, it's like the sun's going down, so you're not able to see everything. But it still just looks cold, like legitimately it looked like here these first few frames look cold like just the way like this looks like it looks cold anyway uh so yeah that's gonna be it for this video and um you know maybe i'll put it up on youtube <laughs> maybe i won't but i do think again you know, I don't really want to be too political and stuff. Uh, I, I don't even particularly like Paul. Like, I majored in political science. And then I realized uh, I didn't graduate with that. Because at, at a certain point, I realized, like, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't think politics actually solved much. In fact, it seems to be the hindrance of, like, <laughs> progress. Uh, I... It, it just is what it is. Like I said, if you if the system is so hyper partisan that you can't get even obvious like stuff like hmm, the energy infrastructure and the energy capital of the world should be, uh, you know, structurally sound enough to where it doesn't explode because it gets too cold. Well, then, like we just saw at the beginning of this video, then, you know, um, if if what I just said is like going to cause an argument between uh, political parties. You know, that's what I mean. It's like, is anything going to be done? Um, so Team Red, you should probably get on that. Uh, I suppose Team Blue should probably hold you to account. Um, but, you know, I don't really care. I don't like politics and, you know, I don't, I don't particularly think politics gets that much done anyway. Uh, so... That's going to be it for this video, and, uh, or partisan politics. Anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you have a blessed one. Uh, stay safe out there. It's very, cold, very cold. Um, and, you know, stay warm. Uh, prayerfully, this does not get too problematic for the state or the city, for Texas, Houston, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio. El Paso, Lubbock, Midland, you know, anywhere, Brownsville, Rio Grande Valley, whatever. I like, you know, nowhere in Texas, hopefully, and United States. But I can, sh I can at least look at what's going on here in Texas and, you know, be a voice for that. So, um, and, you know, that would just be a microcosm of the macrocosm that is the United States, right? So uh, what I'm saying here might apply to other places as well. That being said, hope you've enjoyed. Have a blessed one. Later. Yeah.